What up, dead nerds? Let's see how I use this as a data analyst. Now, Python is a popular tool you can install for free. And here are some recent poll results from my YouTube channel. Let's analyze them. First, I collect these results into this script. Next, I perform a simple calculation to analyze it. Then I plot these findings to share. In three simple lines of code, we just performed the three major steps of any data analytics project. And this multi-purpose programming language is nearly limitless in what it can do. From building bots to scrape the internet for more data, to using advanced machine learning to predict results, or even building a website to share your favorite data nerd content. Speaking of content, my subscribers have been relentless in asking about top skills they should be learning as a data analyst. So like any lazy data nerd, I'm going to automate this data analysis and build an app to tell them just this. First, we need real-time data. Whenever a subscriber accesses the app, it needs today's results. Next, we'll have to perform data analysis to find the top skills within this data. And last, we'll share these results via an easy, accessible app. Now, we're going to do this entire project with Python. And I've chose this over other tools as Python makes it super easy to not only share all of this code with you, but also so that way you can contribute and improve this code. Because frankly, I'm still improving my skills as well. And I've been spending the last number of years doing this. So you're not going to master this language in this 15 minute video. Instead, I reached out to Coursera to sponsor this video. And I'll be sharing courses from them that I've taken to improve my Python skills that I'll link below. All right, so let's get in the first phase of this project of collecting the data that we need. Now there are a number of ways to get data. If you work for a company, they'll typically house their data in databases, or if they're less advanced, they'll store them in Excel sheets. No, God, please, no, no! For both of these scenarios, Python can connect to these data sources and a lot more. But unfortunately, I don't have any access to any company databases, so we need to search for publicly available data. Sites like Google and even Kaggle are great starting places, but searching them, I found they didn't have what I needed. Another popular option to get data with Python is web scraping. Now, I attempted this last year with a Python bot I built that collected job postings from LinkedIn. With this data collected, I then analyzed it for skill requirements. Unfortunately, I ended up getting banned on LinkedIn from doing this. So this wouldn't satisfy our rule number one of collecting real-time data. Now, I will admit, web scraping is great if you need something once or even twice. But most likely, if you're not getting actively blocked by websites, your code will eventually break due to web pages changing. So where the heck are we going to get this data? Well, there's actually a more reliable source than web scraping, and that is APIs, or Application Programming Interface. Wrong way. Application Programming Interface. <laughs> These APIs allow you to send code from your computer, the client, to another computer called the server in order to request the information that you need in a more sustainable manner. You've got mail. Say, for example, I wanted to collect the key information from my favorite programming languages from Wikipedia. I can install something like the Wikipedia API with Python, so I can tell Wikipedia what page I want and then even specify things like page title and sections. Even in the future, if Wikipedia updates the layout of their page, this API will continue to work. And there are actually a ton of APIs out there to use. Luckily for us, I found this one, which is SERP API conveniently, which provides results from search engine result pages, like Bing, Yahoo, or even YouTube. But I would say that for searching Google, this API really has some special features. Specifically, I can go in and actually search job results on Google. So say I was to search data analyst jobs in the United States. This is what I would get. So we can use SERP API to get all these different job postings. So check this out. First, I can install SERP API. Then I can specify things like job title and search location. From there, I call the API with this information. In less than a second, we have it. And from there, I can actually print out these results. And this has all the information we need, such as title, location, description, and salary. If we actually went back to that web page itself, we can see that this job right here is requesting things like SQL, Python, and Power BI. And we'll be able to extract this information from all these different job postings for our dashboard. So this is pretty amazing, right? We're using Python in order to call an API and get the job postings that we want. What we'll need to do next is set up some automation in order to call this API daily and then store these results. Now, what I just did in Python really only requires the basic skills. 
but unfortunately there's a lot to the basics specifically for Python, more than I can cover in this video. So if you're a complete beginner to Python, I recommend checking out the Python for Everybody specialization. Dr. Chuck is the instructor and he breaks down the basics of Python, all the way from installing it, understanding data types, calling APIs, and finally accessing data via SQL databases, which is actually what we're gonna do next. So right now we're collecting around 100 jobs per day but I'm planning to upramp this to around 10,000 jobs a day. If I do the math for that, that's around 3 million jobs per year. Wow. So storing this data in something like a CSV or Excel file is not an option. So we need to store this data in a sustainable solution, something that's designed for large amounts of data. So we're going to use a SQL database. Wow. Now, because I want this data to be accessible by everybody, we're going to use a cloud-based solution, specifically BigQuery from the Google Cloud Platform. Those that took the Google Analytics certificate are familiar with this solution. All right, so jumping back to my computer, I've set up a blank database in BigQuery that has all of the different fields that we need to import into it. Once we have those query results from SERP API, we can then connect to this BigQuery database and insert those new results. After running this script, I can then go back to that BigQuery database and look in and actually see that all of this data was imported into it. Now, remember the first rule of this project, we need to have real-time data. Because of this, I need to execute this Python script daily in order to grab the jobs from SERP API and insert them into BigQuery. Now, if we have to rely on me to run this Python code daily, we're gonna be in big trouble, as I'm gonna probably forget. Instead, I took all this Python code and put it into Google Cloud to be automated and run daily on its own. So now, this data pipeline is fully automated and will continue to collect into the future. But that's not even the best part. I've taken it a step further to export this data from BigQuery into Kaggle so that way all my subscribers have access to this real-time data, which I don't know of many public data sets that actually do this. Now, knowing cloud technology such as Google Cloud, Azure, or even AWS is not something that I think an entry-level data analyst needs to know. However, I do think it is a growing skill for those that have a few years of experience as data analysts should start to learn. Because of this, I've invested more time in learning Google Cloud, and my studies potentially saved me a bill of $3,000. Let me explain. When I first started setting up these services in Google Cloud, I made a big mistake and started a service I didn't need called Google Data Flow. Come to find out this is an expensive service, which cost me almost 10 bucks a day. That escalated quickly. So if this would have ran all year, it would have cost me over 3,000 bucks. And Google Cloud doesn't have any alerts or notifications to let you know when you're using more of their service. Luckily for my studies, I learned the basics of monitoring services and checking balances. So I was able to find this issue before escalating further. Now my bill is back to normal and it's only costing about a few cents a day, which isn't that bad. All right, so let's actually get into cleaning and analyzing the data. And this is where I spend the majority of my time. When I first started as a data analyst, my expectation was that I'd spend the majority of my time analyzing data. In reality, I spend most of my time trying to clean up the data. What the? Remember our goal. We're trying to find what are the top skills of a data analyst. Inspecting one of the job descriptions, we can see buried inside of it is a list of tools that are required for this job. So the great thing about Python is we can just tell it what to look for within these descriptions and extract those values out. So I put together a pretty hefty list of keywords that Python needs to look for, focusing on programming languages and also on tools. With these lists of keywords, I then created a loop to go through each one of the job descriptions and extract these keywords out of it. So now looking at this updated data set, we can see that Python went through and pulled out those keywords that were in each of those job descriptions. But we're not done with data cleaning just yet. I'd like to clean one more column and that's salary. Right now it's in an unusable format. Sometimes it's hourly or yearly, sometimes there's ranges. I can go through and create rules to clean up all of those different salary columns. So now I have the salary in a much more usable format. Having it in columns for the average, min, and max, along with the rate. All right, so I know that took me like less than a minute to explain, but that actually took me a few days actually to figure out and actually clean. So don't underestimate how long it's gonna take for the data cleaning portion. All right, let's move into the EDA now, or exploratory data analysis. So looking at some basic statistics, it looks like we've collected around 1,300 jobs already and are averaging about 100 jobs a day since we started this. Let's actually go in now and visualize a lot of the different columns and see what values they have in them. We can see that data analyst is one of the most frequent titles. For the job type, it looks like there's mostly full-time jobs available with some contractor. But what I think is most interesting is that most of the jobs are coming from LinkedIn, 
the place that I wanted to scrape originally, but also from these other ones. So Upwork, Monster, and Talent. So we get an assortment. All right, so let's now look at some of the statistics of the salary. This is a histogram showing the salaries are distributed between $50,000 and $200,000. It looks like we have a high clumping around $100,000. We'll probably need to investigate this at some point. So next is the hourly pay. And it looks like it's ranging from 20 to 80 bucks. I actually dove into this further and found that the majority of these postings came from Upwork, which is a freelance site. So for both of these salary plots, this includes not only entry level, but also those that have more experience. So this is why this is such a big range for both of these. All right, so let's actually dive into that final analytical question of what is the top skill of data analysts? For this, we need a metric. Because we have skills in a job posting, we can evaluate the likelihood of a skill appearing in a job posting. If Python is in two of three job postings, it's likely is 66%. So once again, Python does this really conveniently. I can go through each of those keywords and calculate a percentage for each one to determine their likelihood to be in a job posting, which drum roll please is SQL <laughs> and then Excel and finally Python. But I'll be honest, I'm not really surprised by these results. They're actually very similar to what I found last year scraping LinkedIn job data. Now, if you're curious to seeing all this Python code that I just went through, put this notebook on Kaggle so you can go through it, download it, and try it out. And if you're looking at the code and have no idea what's going on there, then after you've gone through and learned the basics with Python for everybody, I recommend next diving into the Applied Data Science with Python Specialization. This course is packed full of information. It has all those tactics and information to do exactly what I just did with popular libraries such as NumPy, Matplotlib, and even Pandas. <laughs> And the highlight at the end of the course is that it even gets into machine learning. As I'd like to build some models to predict salary and skills, but that's for another video. All right, let's actually jump back into this Python notebook. I now have this script in an automated fashion. So say I wanted updated results tomorrow. I could just go and run this script. Actually, let's go see future Luke to see what the results are tomorrow. Future Luke here, and I guess I'll just stop editing to answer this question. Anyway, I ran this Python script and it looks like SQL is still in the lead, but that we also have Python catching up. Nice, thanks future Luke. Cool story, bro. I'm gonna get back to editing. Okay, so this is good for me and for future me. But how the heck do I get these results to my subscribers? Well, this is where dashboard solutions come in. Typically in the past, I've used solutions like Power BI and Tableau. For this, we're gonna use Python, which I've never really done before. Now, Python has a lot of different support and packages to use for this. I decided to just go with the most popular and most user-friendly option, which was Streamlit. I was able to reuse a lot of the work I had done already from importing and cleaning the data, performing all those calculations, and then visualizing it all. The best part is that Streamlit also deploys your app for free. So let's check it out. On the first page, it has where you can see the top skills for data analysts. Also have options to sort by different languages. And then also you can go in to even see a daily trend analysis of each of these skills. Now, I also wanted to include the salary data. So I included it to where you can see the annual, hourly, and also a standardized method that combines both the annual and the hourly into a common unit. There's also other features as well to show the health of the data collection, something to explore the actual data set itself, and then a page just to find out more about this project itself. So I'm really proud of this. This is a really crazy solution. We're using Python for everything, from gathering a data from Google Jobs, to putting it into a database at BigQuery, and then extracting it into providing in this dashboard that anybody can access, and this it's hopefully only the beginning of this project. Right now, we're only extracting about 100 jobs a day for data analysts in the United States. I wanna grow this further to those beyond data analysts, such as data scientists and data engineers. And thankfully, Serp API has agreed to help with this by providing some free credits. And with that, I need your help. If you find any interesting insights in this data set, I'd be beyond grateful if you share them to my subreddit, r slash data nerd. I'm hoping that by open sourcing this project, we can get more contributions and make it easier for those that are aspiring to become data analysts, engineers, or scientists to land their jobs in this field. All right, as always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. With that, I'll see you in the next one.